Don in London, hello, it's July 17th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. And also recovery from certain emotions, I guess, or feelings of fear and not being part of and not included. Why did I say that? Well, it, I, I suppose it become apparent as I go on. My addictive substance was alcohol. I was an alcoholic not in recovery for many years and now I'm in recovery for some years from the addiction of alcohol and also behaviour around people, places and things and I'm relieved I'm relieved that today is another day, just simply one more day in recovery not wanting a drink not needing a drink, not desiring a drink, not wanting drink in my life at all and that's a big change because I really couldn't see a way out of the malady of addiction on my own. So what happened? Well, decades of drinking to take the edge off, to fix myself, to feel right, to feel wrong, to feel happy, to feel sad, to feel anything at all, and then to use drink not to feel anything ever again and not wanting to wake up in the morning and face the day that's how it got in the end for me and it was a war of attrition on my self will willpower trying to be right trying to be perfect and trying to be a pain in the neck no doubt by always delivering whatever I thought it was you wanted me to be and wanted me to do so very much a people pleaser in that respect and then I would fit in I would fit in with the right people in the right places doing the right things but it never worked out quite like that because are we not competitive are we not always looking for the next right thing maybe less so these days for me so a huge change in the way I live life live life one day at a time understand what my feelings are and behave accordingly and with wisdom of the years how to be free to make choices on a daily basis which fit my circumstances and for that I'm extraordinarily grateful and I wasn't able to do it on my own so along the way family, friends, professionals, medical people uh, all helped me learn how to be me and even then when it came to drink I couldn't do it on my own and I needed expert help on how to stay sober and the place where I found people who had the most sobriety one day at a time but for years and years on end was a fellowship and that fellowship is AA Alcoholics Anonymous I never speak for AA never can never will because every person in the fellowship is unique and authentic they are in the right place at the right time with their own experiences of life and making choices as best they can based on reality and not on a wish and not on a whim and not wishing themselves into the future as much as we used to anyway so AA, a fellowship I'll just share the AA preamble before I go into my thoughts of the day and the AA, AA thoughts of the day it's most important to understand the context of these videos it's about sharing a message that there is hope beyond addiction and that addiction can become recovery but we never lose the taste for whatever it was that we were addicted to so not doing what we were addicted to is key so what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism so the whole point is experience, strength and hope of recovery the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking and that's it there are no rules laws or regulations to obey within the fellowship it's a desire to stop drinking and if you say you're in you're in there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions AA is not allied with any sect denomination politics organization or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy neither endorses nor opposes any causes but here's the but Everyone in AA is affiliated to something 
and has ideas about life and how they wish they they wish to run their lives. But we don't try and share and impose our ideas on other people. We just share experience, strength and hope of sobriety. But we bring everything to the party, every life experience, or we would have nothing to talk about, would we? Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So that's the context of my videos. And I was asked to do it because some people can't get to meetings, some people have no idea what AA is there to do, simply to find out how to be sober a day at a time. And some people aren't so good with reading, uh, or in early recovery cannot read or cannot make sense of anything and cannot focus long enough to get the message. So any sort of media, whether it's written, said on a radio podcast or video, which helps people find recovery, seems an appropriate way forward for me and some other people. But a lot of people like to keep their sharing within the fellowship under the banner of anonymity. And I feel that is sacrosanct. Anonymity is sacrosanct. So truth can be found. The truth of the person you are and what you want to achieve and the achievement for me is sober one day at a time where my feelings fit my experience of now the fellowship is described as an emotional as an emotional spiritual program so if I know what my feelings are and they fit the day I'm in in the moment of now and I'm sober all well and good I don't have to fix myself and I don't have to try and change the way I feel with a substance or addictive behaviour. Now that sounds quite good to me, but when I first got to AA I didn't like it because AA was full of people who were happy, or at least appeared to be happy, and there were some who were sad as well. And then I realised that fifty percent will be happy on any day and fifty percent might be sad on any one day. And in recent days I've met people who are very angry about their lives. And why are they angry? Because of things that happen to them which work beyond their power to stop. And obviously that's around being hurt, being abused, being put down, and then not able to cope with life. And when we're not able to cope with life, oblivion often is the answer for some of us. So the fellowship has taught me an awful lot about how to be me, how to understand my feelings, and I remember saying a few weeks back that uh, somebody had really trodden on my to toes and I told them to F off and mind their own business. I've modified that to why don't I F off and mind my own business. So rather than push people into a place of anger and hurt, I've decided often when I feel hurt by some, some remarks or somebody telling me what to do, I shall say uh, I'm going to fuck off and mind my own business and go. And I don't have to listen to something which is going to hurt me or stop me from making free choices on a daily basis which do not interfere with other people. It might interfere with their belief system because I won't believe what they're saying. But then aren't we all able to do that? And that, what, Why else get sober if we can't find our freedoms in life? So the AA daily reflections, it, but humility is important and this is what July is all about for me and the AA Daily Reflections which is in this book uh, Daily Reflections just for today this one is quite good because well no it's not it's excellent and although it talks about God a lot and people have their own understanding of God that's blinking marvellous it means that we're not God and that you know humans have the ability to keep on learning life and I suppose July is all about humility my shortcomings were forgetfulness about learning and no humility when it came to how to be sober and how to live life. And now I learn to live life just one day at a time, as best I can. So, AA Daily Reflections for today. Step 7. Surrender and Self-Examination, 17th of July. My stability came out of trying to give, not out of demanding that I receive. Thus I think it can work out with emotional sobriety. If we examine every disturbance we have, great or small, we will find at the root of it some unhealthy dependency, 
and its consequent unhealthy demand. So an unhealthy dependency is codependency, where something gets power over us, or we feel that we ought to have power over something else, a person, a place or thing, and that's deadly when it comes to sobriety. And it's cons consequent unhealthy demand. Let us, with God's help, or simply good conscience depending on your belief system, continually surrender these hobbling demands. Then we can be set free to live and love. We may then be able to twelfth step ourselves and others into emotional sobriety. And the twelfth step is all about sharing the message to other people without imposing a message on other people. So people take from the wisdom of the many in fellowship. It's not my voice which is important, it's the many voices where truth, love and wisdom reside. I only know the truth, love and wisdom which I, I can learn on a daily basis, so it's limited to my perception. But if we have the ability to listen to other people, many people, inside and outside fellowship, then we start to make progress. And we alter our outlook according to real life circumstances, rather than wish, wishing ourselves into another dimension, or wishing ourselves into another life. We can change life, and life becomes different, but we will always be there as well. So if we don't change some of what is going on inside us, we will never change our dependencies on others. And I've had to do that this weekend. And not in a nasty way. I just realise I'm just unhelpful to, to another person. So I must remove myself. And that's good. Because I don't want it in a place of hurt or demand, codependency. Years of dependency on alcohol as a chemical mood changer deprived me of the capability to interact emotionally with my fellows. Yes, because I fixed myself so I could fix being with you. And I don't need to do that. I can just be with you as I am. Or not, as the case may be. I thought I had to be self-sufficient, self-reliant and self-motivated in a world of unreliable people. Finally, I lost my self-respect and was left with dependency, and in my case, alcohol dependency and addicted to wishing my life different and it wouldn't change of course I was stuck lacking any ability to trust myself or to believe in anything and that's true because if we have no esteem or confidence or faith or courage it's very difficult to work out even what to do today let alone any other and in early recovery the only answer is let go the, the dependent dependency and have enough courage to feel the abject misery of early days. Oh, it was that way for me. But some say they had a great revelation and everything was all right from the moment they stopped. Wow, fantastic for them, but it wasn't that way for me. Surrender and self-examination while sharing with newcomers helped me to ask humbly for help. So even if I go out talking about what, you know, what is recovery and sharing the message I need to say it's the many voices in recovery which keep me sober and without them what would I do well I don't know but I'm certainly glad there is a fellowship there which supports me and then of course I'm open to the truth love and wisdom from the rest of the world as well and often I get my wisdom from people I meet doing my daily my daily routines like going out shopping or just meeting people in the street my neighbours, bus drivers, taxi drivers well less so taxi drivers but just connecting with people in a gentle way rather than judging the world as the world is judging me and last in the last few days it's been really apparent to me I've said this before hurt people hurt people as we hurt we learn to hurt others and I remember working for a boss who was a bully and the only way to succeed was to acquiesce or accept he was a bully. But then it started; his behaviour started to rub off on me, and I started to behave as a bully, not to people around me directly in the job I did, but with suppliers and other people. I became angry, an angry man, and that was because I was working for an angry man, and he was completely inconsistent and whenever you thought you were on the right place or in the right place doing the right thing he would undermine it and that behaviour it rubbed off on me 
and I see it rubs off on anyone who's been abused as we learn how to forgive our own behaviour that is I had to learn how to forgive I had another breakdown because I saw how I hurt other people and then the drink a couple of years later took hold and it was life was an abomination to me but as we learn how to forgive our own behaviour that is come to terms with what has happened forgive the fact that I'm human and can behave as badly as anybody else given the circumstances then I need offer myself forgiveness because I need to forgive everybody who hurt me in the past because if I don't forgive the hurts I'm still stuck with that codependency around old behaviour old ways of thinking and doing retaliating, isolating, cutting, cutting myself off not relating to people that's what happens so learning to forgive others but it doesn't mean as a consequence that they are always going to be in our lives sometimes we have to let go because we know letting go means that we let go trying to put a situation right which we can't put right and let go with love and don't undermine a person and I've done that a bit this last week or two I need not hurt anyone anymore myself or anyone acceptance and forgiveness go hand in hand we learn truth to love and be loved and the wisdom to know a better way to live today and it doesn't just happen I know now, now know a better way to live today it's incremental I learn how to live a better life today one day at a time which means I just get a bit more wisdom each day it's never going to be I'm cured and I'm a, I'm a fit human being and I can share everything with you which is important because I need to tell you how to do it and the answer is I, I can't tell you how to do it we learn our own path unique and authentic and I learn from a large number of people every day last night this is what I wrote I feel gratitude tonight many years learning how past generations and my life experience of damage would fall into today which means we have the history of the generations behind us and my life as it has been where damage done and abuse done to me if I haven't cleared the wreckage of the past well I think I come on to that everything all my anger about the past can make me angry and the anger is bigger than anything I can face today because it's only day sized but if I use my history to as a blunt instrument I can hurt people badly and that's no that's no solace at all so forgiving myself for what I learned and then learning a new way and forgiving other people for being the way they are even if they're not going to learn a new way just means it's okay it's just okay I can walk away and keep on living life as best I can to the good of my good conscience and listening to others good conscience too when I see others who have not let go the wreckage of the past still suffer unimaginable pain I need not hinder not judge or make it worse and I felt that last night as well around a whole range of things because the unimaginable pain that people suffer in their childhood or growing up can taint the rest of their lives and the worst part is if they don't forgive themselves for their part in it which is just to have been there there can be no forgiveness of other people either and so the anger rages on letting go can be the hardest, hardest and holding on the worst we can hold on to all that pain and then inflict it on others and we don't even know we're doing it we don't know that we do it sometimes peace and serenity reclaimed just for today and that was me last night and that's, I felt an awful lot of things last night but to let go with love and know that I can't help it's got to be right and it's not about trying to impose my judgment on another, another person it's just me saying I need to mind my own business and I'm not, I'm not good for some people and that's right I am not good for some people so that was yesterday and other years surrender and self-examination olden days the butterflies and knots fear 
and worrying about me inside myself, self, self. When we are able to understand our part in the world today, what a wonderful feeling. A choice to be sober, have faith, courage and esteem, which flow from our mistakes. I think it was Buddha who said, forgive every mistake you make because it's all about learning. And learning new choices and how to be included today. And we can't be included everywhere because we're not everybody's cup of tea. And of course not everybody is our cup of tea and there are many things we don't want to do anymore which are about fixing ourselves. It's about living in the moment. Emotional spiritual progress. When we consider our spiritual life today, we let go opinion and belief in favour of favour of faith in universal truth. That's the truth that we learn by the many voices around us sharing how it is for them. Our part in life with choices and the big picture. As we feel well, our emotional progress is powered by open, honest and willing outlooks and actions from good deeds. And sometimes we won't know what the good deed is because we don't know we've done it, which is probably the best way. And that, you know, we don't need to be thanked for it, it just by being ourselves, learning how to love, be loved back, and keep on learning the wisdom, open, honest, and willing to change. Not hold on to something as if we have power we have the answer for other people because I don't have the answer for another person another person works out the answer for themselves free, with freedom and living in reality and that's how sharing works for me so I'm not a guru thank goodness and uh, you know any any information or wisdom that I learn I try and share it's not me with the answer it's the answer which becomes apparent in real life right now what to do. Problem solving, decision making is better with a sober head and not trying to bend the world the way we want it or bend ourselves into a world which we cannot live in. So freedom of choice in reality given life as it is today is a hell of a thing to do and we only learn it one day at a time with any luck. So I'm very fortunate, I'm very, very fortunate today to know and understand my limits and uh, I have immense gratitude for fellowship, anonymity, where I was able to find the truth and then to share a message of experience, strength and hope in any way possible to support sobriety and living to, to, good, to good conscience and a way forward, but living in the moment rather than wishing the moment away so I can have a better one. So, you know, this thing of hurt people hurt people. It's true. And somebody made a comment on my Facebook page. There's a book called Hurt People Hurt People. So it's not something I came up with exclusively. Indeed, I knew nothing about the book, but I'm so glad that somebody else wrote it because it, it would take me an awful long time to try and write one. And I don't know that I can not in any helpful way if there's already one out there. There's no point in making another book for the sake of it. So that's me for today. Sunday, July 17th. Lits, little bits of sunshine, little bits of rain and hopefully a meeting later. Yeah, life goes on. So I always say the serenity prayer at the end of my videos uh, It's not because... well no, it's good, it's good. It's to God, actually. It's the serenity prayer to God. Or good conscience, or whatever it is that you believe in, in your own way. But the meditation of can do, can't do, and wisdom to know the difference, is really what it boils down to. Some things I can do, change my attitudes and behaviour. Some things I can't do. I can't change people, places and things. I can be with people, in places, with things. But I have to make a choice about what is right for me. So can do, can't do, wisdom to know the difference. So the prayer to God or good conscience. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. For me, in the moment, and just for today.